One of the things that confuses people quite a lot when they're buying a dining table is that what on earth is a phono stage? Often you'll see it on the box, it'll say includes phono stage built in, or maybe they're buying a higher end dining table and are wondering why you need to pay this extra 50 quid for this little box that goes between your dining table and your powered speakers or your dining table and your microsystem. Well, I'm going to explain to you why. Come into my realm and I will show you. I will show you. At the most basic level, a phono stage takes your turntable's phono level output and converts it into a line level output for your amplifier to play with. CD players, MP3 players and TV analog outputs all use a line level output. To dig a little bit deeper into what a phono stage does, you need to understand a few key points. Firstly, you need to know that the electrical output of your turntable stylus or cartridge is actually an incredibly low voltage. That's why if you've ever plugged your turntable into a normal line level input in the back of your amplifier, the volume is rather low. So one of the jobs then that a phono stage does is to take your turntable's phono level output and apply gain to it so the amplifier can use it. However, it does have another job and the other job is a little bit more interesting. If you have ever plugged your turntable into a normal line level input and cranked it up to the point you can hear it, the end result, even if you can hear it, is a little bit thin and reedy and it doesn't have any bass. Why is that? So squashing all that musical information onto an LP takes up a lot of space, which is obviously rather limited. Bass in particular takes up tons of width. So by cutting or de-emphasizing the bass and boosting the treble in the mastering process, it's possible to reduce the size of the grooves quite dramatically. When it then comes to playback and you're about to drop your needle, the phono stage does the opposite. It boosts the bass and cuts the treble. The end result being, in theory, the signal that the mastering engineer heard when he cut that record is the same thing that you should hear. The particular name for the response curve used is RIAA equalization or Recording Industry Association of America equalization. Here's a graph representing what's going on. Zero hertz marked here represents a flat response. Basically, if the line were here, it would show a recording that hadn't been altered. The blue line shows the equalization that's applied to the audio before the record is cut. All the bass frequencies are dramatically reduced and the treble increased. The red line is what your phono stage should be doing. The equalization has been swapped on its head and the opposite is achieved. The bass is increased and the treble decreased. Effectively, what you hear should be unaltered audio, as if the EQ was flat at zero hertz. In the early days of vinyl, when different record levels actually vied for control with their own format, be it 7-inch singles or 100... 100-inch singles? Yeah, them. Each of these labels had their own equalization method. Should we cut at 100 hertz? Should we cut at 150 hertz? It wasn't until about the mid-50s that the RIAA eventually won out and became the standard that we have now. There is a drawback to that equalization, though. When it comes to playback and you're about to drop that needle on the record, your phono stage boosts all that bass and it also boosts all the rumble and noise from your actual turntable. So the noise of the platter going around and the motor rumbling all gets boosted. That's why high-end turntable manufacturers spend a lot of time and money isolating all those different elements from each other. So do you need a phono stage? Well, if your turntable set up and working, then probably not. Maybe your turntable already has one built in or maybe your amplifier does. If you're unsure though, there is a fairly easy way to identify it. If you look at the back of your turntable, you'll see your red and white output, your phono outputs, and you'll also see an earth or a ground output that goes into the from your turntable to the back of your amp, and it cuts out a hum that you get with your turntable if it's not plugged in. Typically, it's more basic turntables that come with built-in phono stages, although saying that, today companies like Project and Flexon have started developing a few turntables with them built in, with the market presumably being aimed at people who have things like Bose systems and sound bars. It saves you having one more box, but at the expense of flexibility in the future, if you upgrade to a proper hi-fi system, you can't either use your amplifier's phono stage or upgrade to a better one. So maybe you've already bought your quality turntable, you maybe have a Project, a Riga, or a Lin even, if you've gone a little bit mad, and you need to hook it up to your powered speakers or your micro system. Well, in that case, you will need a phono stage. The £40 Project Phono Box E is maybe a good place to start. It's got quite a good phono stage that I think is even slightly better than the one built into my own Yamaha amplifier. It's a great budget choice. You can't really go wrong with that one. You could easily benefit, though, on spending a little bit more on a phono stage. Even if, say, you've got an amplifier, it could make a quite inexpensive upgrade route for your hi-fi system. Certainly a little bit cheaper than buying a new turntable. 
Another choice is the Riga Fono A2D. It comes in at about £89 and includes a USB output, so if you want to put your records onto your PC or whatever, it's ideal for that and it gets very good reviews. Spending a little bit more could let your project Phono Box S at around £130. It could be a real upgrade on your built-in turntables amplifier, just have a listen to it first. With anything in the audio file world though, there's always something bigger and better. And if you want to go mad, maybe spend £500, £1000 on your phono stage to go with your mega amplifier, then you can do. Check out companies like Roxanne and Lehman Audio, they all make these kind of things. So I hope that clears up for you what a phono stage is and what it does and how it works. If you've got any more questions regarding them, I can try and answer, just pop them in the comments down below and I'll get to you as soon as I can. So thank you very much for watching, I'm your local audio llama, I'll see you later.